Do you know Adam Greentree? I don't know him personally. I know of him. Adam filmed a grizzly bear in the San Juans. Yeah, which is which is possible, man. Do you, do you know the history of the last uh, grizzly bear that they that they saw in there? No. All right, so I have to laugh at this a little bit because you can actually tell that I'm nervous at this point, right? I'm touching my face. It's kind of like one of those classic tales that there's something a little bit off. A lot of people who watch this they actually said you you knew that he was full of shit at that moment, but I can tell you I didn't have any predetermined opinion on this. And I've come to some conclusions and they might not align with what you're expecting. So let's dive into it. So first my take on identifying grizzly bears versus black bears. There are a lot of guides that I know that have experience hunting black bears in grizzly country. They're seeing both black bears and grizzlies on the same days. I have a lot of friends like that. And I would actually put myself into this category too, not to be like an egomaniac about it or whatever, but I've hunted black bears a lot in areas that have grizzly bears and I've seen dozens and dozens of grizzly bears. And what I will say is that if one of those guides or my intuition myself, if I see a bear, told me that's a grizzly bear or I saw a grizzly bear, I would 100% believe them. And the reason is, is that once you've been around both species quite a bit, they're not hard to identify. But what's weird about grizzlies is there's all these indicators, right? And, and Joe and I talked about a couple of them, but you know, you've got some color indicators of the bear. You've got the hump on their back. You've got their claws. You've got the way they move. You've got their facial structure. A lot of different variables that set grizzlies apart from black bears. But, you know, really when you're defining those to somebody, you, it's really hard to identify a bear on one of those. But once you've seen both of them, your brain just correlates all those small variables together and you're going to make the right decision almost all the time once you've been around these species. An analogy that probably a lot of people in the West or the Midwest can understand is the difference between a mule deer and a whitetail. If you think about the little nitty gritty co you know, coloration, all these other little variables, it's actually kind of hard to define you know, what's what just based on one variable. But once you've been around them, you know that's a whitetail. Oh, deer pops up, you know that's a mule deer. If a deer just sprints across the road, generally you still know exactly what species it is. It's not actually difficult. Grizzly bears and black bears are the same once you've been exposed to them. They said they'd been extinct for like 20 or 30 years already. And How the fuck do they know? Here's the thing. <laughs> like that kind of talk is so wild. Like, oh, yeah. so are, you, do you, are you out there with cameras in every fucking acre of that yeah. land? Shut up. You don't know. Like yeah. you should really take the word of the people that find these things out there. Sure. Because those people are actually there. Like, right. How deep do the biologists go? I mean, how often are they there? How many boots on the ground wildlife surveyors do you have that are right. telling you exactly what, you know, how many bears there are? Yeah, yeah. How could you know? Joe actually makes a really good point here, and I wish we would have dove into this more in the podcast. He has a pretty good understanding that all the wildlife managers and the biologists, they're spread very thin. And he was making a point about the fact that, yeah, it's possible that the location of a group of grizzlies or an individual grizzly you know, in Colorado could be unknown to wildlife managing, managers and biologists based on how much exposure they actually get in the field and how, how thin they're spread out. He makes an awesome point there. So this is what I brought up earlier. Joe trusts Adam's judgment. And so I can't comment on that. I don't know Adam. I don't know his experience. I mean, I check out his Instagram. The guy's hunted a ton, but I don't know his specific experience with black bears and grizzlies. He's obviously been around a few, so I can totally understand where Joe is coming from. And because he knows him personally, you know, his his opinion on it might be might be what mine would be, right? If certain people told me that they saw a grizzly bear in the San Juans, I would be like 100% I back that person. It was for sure a grizzly bear. So Given I can't I can't pass judgment on that because I don't know and Joe does know Adam so you know this is this is a reasonable way to look at it it might be the case that Adam has a lot more knowledge about grizzlies and black bears than everybody out there that, who's contacted me thinks so Joe Joe shows me this picture off of Adam's Instagram I think and. Here, I kind of fault myself because I think if I was being intellectually honest, I would have pushed back a little bit on Joe in the moment. But here's the deal. I, I kind of want to describe something to you. In that studio, you know, when you're watching the podcast, that what they show you, it's actually fairly clear. This wasn't a real good picture anyways, really. Like Adam's picture was a little bit fuzzy anyhow. But when you're in the actual studio, it's up on a screen and Jamie enlarges it. So I looked at the image and maybe I had seen it before or not. I don't, I don't know. These aren't usually things that I you know, dwell on or whatever. But looking at it in the studio, 
it was kind of pixelated, honestly, and it, there's no way I could have made a judgment on that on that picture. So I kind of fault myself by not telling Joe that directly because I did think that in my mind. I thought, you know what, like there's no way I could decide for sure if that's a black bear or a brown bear based on that picture. And you know, just just so everybody knows, the reason being is like you can't. There's a couple reasons why that is. One, the color doesn't matter. You know, it it really doesn't. If on really clear pictures, grizzlies can be the same color as color phase black bears, but in real life, grizzlies still have kind of like a sparkle to their hide that black bears don't have. I know that sounds a little woo woo to folks, but there is a little bit of a color difference that you generally do not see on black bears. But in this picture, there's no way that was relevant. And then on size, what I would say is particularly on interior grizzlies, I've seen, I mean, I've been in areas where there's interior grizzlies and, there, and there's interior black bears. And literally like on a logging road, we jump a big, big black bear. And then we go around the switchback and there's an interior grizzly there. And the black bear we just jumped is substantially larger than the grizzly we're now looking at. So size really doesn't matter. And the other thing on size is particularly in an image where it's only one individual animal, when it comes to bears, it's really hard to tell size. So I don't think that's a great indicator either. My judgment just looking at the picture is really no difference than if somebody just told me this story verbally. The picture doesn't tell me a lot. Um, I can see I can see where Joe's coming from on it, but for me personally, in my based on my experience, the picture is not gonna sway me either way. Like I said before, if you're there even from a distance and you have experience with both species, it's you would I would know immediately. Even you know if that picture was probably taken from four or five hundred yards through a spotter or something like that. But even in that situation, an experienced person with both species is gonna have no problem. But from an individual picture that doesn't show you all the variables, you're not getting, you're not looking for that teddy bear face. You don't see that sparkle of the hide. You don't see the claws. You don't see how they're moving. You don't see the hump, all of those different things. You're only seeing a still picture. It's impossible to tell from that picture. But one thing I would tell folks is if you get in this situation and you're in a situation where you think you see a grizzly bear, maybe it's in a super unique spot like this potential grizzly bear, or you're just somewhere and you want to make sure that what you saw is an actual grizzly bear one of the best ways to identify a grizzly bear is by its track in my experience if you have a picture of a track somebody can tell you to 99.99999 percent certainty if it's a black bear or a grizzly and it has a lot to do with the shape of the front pad but also the distance of the claws from the pad grizzlies have have much longer claws like it's a stark difference between black bears and grizzlies basically the shape and the length of their claws so you can tell that in the track you know, it could be a small grizzly that's smaller than your average black bear but still the relative differential where those claws sit on the paw in the shape of that upper pad it's very clear if it's a grizzly or not so one way that Adam could have maybe solved this whole controversy, and I don't know that the guy even gives a shit, and I don't blame him if he doesn't give a shit. It's not about that. It's just more about the discussion. One way he could take down any question about it is if he would have got a picture of the tracks of the bear. So if the bear worked off, he could have gone over there and just taken a picture of the track, and then he would know almost with certainty. All right, so my take on this, because I know people are going to put my feet to the fire and say, I want to know what you think, Cliff. Here's what this is based on. First, I don't know Adam. I don't know his experience with bears, all right? So I have to think about the situation. And here's the deal in the San Juan. As I discussed with Joe, bears move a ton, but a grizzly to go from the northern border to the San Juans, I would think there'd be a pretty decent chance of it being identified along the way. And also, it would have gone through a ton of phenomenal bear habitat that I don't really know why it might not, it would have not hung up in and then been, been identified in that first but it's possible, okay? But that's just, just a thought process that the San Juans are down to the south and why was this bear not identified on the journey even if he was crossing a bunch, a bunch of country? It could have just been that people missed him, right? But that kind of goes into my mindset. The other thing that goes into my mindset is just my knowledge around the San Juans. So the last grizzly bear killed in the San Juans was the Ed Wiseman bear that me and Joe discussed. That bear was killed by Ed Wiseman in 1979. So we're basically talking 45 years ago, the last grizzly was seen in the San Juans and killed in the San Juans. Again, this makes me lean a little bit to the side that maybe this was a black bear, right? Because 
That's a lot of years with all the modern technology for a bear to have been missed in the San Juans or a big grizzly track not to have been picked up and identified there. And may, I may be missing that. There may be information out there, sightings about grizzlies in the San Juans that I don't know about. If that came to my attention, you know, this could this would factor into my judgment on it. But if it's been 45 years, you're not with one clearly identified in there, particularly given that the last 20 years, the elk hunting in the San Juans has exploded, right? There's a tremendous amount of over-the-counter elk hunting in there. There's guys all over it in the fall. That's different than the 60s, 70s, and 80s, right? The elk were just coming back in that country back then, so there was less hunting activity. Now there's way, 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 way more. So for over a 45 year period, for there not to be a grizzly identified in there, and then for Adam to see one, it's a little less believable to me. I think if Adam did see a grizzly, it was probably a lone boar that's just roaming around that came out of Wyoming and just traveled five, 600 miles and got down into the San Juans and he saw it very much possible. So sorry for not having a defined answer, but I wanted to just get in the depths of that and kind of tell you where I was coming from. I hope you found this discussion interesting. If you did, do me a favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel.